Welcome back to PSC Stack Byte. This week, we will keep on talking about the automated provisioning solution that we have been covering uh, in the last few weeks. Just as a reminder, it's a solution that makes it possible to provision uh, site collections with PMP templates uh, using an approval flow and a bunch of stuff uh, which leverages the native capabilities of uh, Office 365. Specifically today, we will talk about uh, the Azure function that we will do the actual provisioning of the site collection. And that Azure function will be an HTTP activated Azure function in which uh, we will receive as a set of input arguments through a JSON message, uh, the title, the URL or the alias of the site collection to create, uh, the owners and the members of the site collection that will be created and all the input parameters that we need to do the actual provisioning of the site collection. Inside the Azure function, we will use uh, PMP PowerShell in order to do the real provisioning uh, of the content uh, in the target SharePoint Online environment. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to create such an Azure function. So here is where we were uh, last week uh, when we defined the flow in Power Automate. And as you can remember, we are invoking an HTTP endpoint, which is an Azure function, in order to do the actual provisioning of the site, providing a JSON request in the body of the post message. So let me switch uh, to the Azure function right here. And here we can see I have uh, a function app in which I defined uh, an Azure function based on PowerShell. First of all, this is a function app uh, which is running the version v1 of the hosting environment in order to be able to use the classic uh, uh, .NET or the classic PowerShell because the client side of the model of SharePoint uh, is not yet available for .NET Core and as such uh, we need to work uh, with .NET Classic. So what I did uh, was to create uh, an Azure function and to create uh, a function inside the function app uh, which is an HTTP trigger the function. I enable the experimental language support in order to be able to select PowerShell and I created my uh, provision site uh, uh, Azure function in the function app. Moreover, uh, I also need uh, to create uh, or to register an Azure Active Directory application in the target tenant where I want to do the provisioning because I will need uh, an application to uh, talk uh, over REST APIs uh, with the SharePoint online environment and eventually with the Microsoft Graph environment. And that's why if I go back to my tenant uh, in the portal.azure.com under Azure Active Directory, I can register an application, which of course I already registered, but I will show you the main steps. So I can go to App Registrations, I can click on New Registration, I will provide the, the name for my uh, app, which can be my provisioning uh, app. It will be a single tenant application uh, so far because I don't need to provide multi-tenant functionality. And this will be the client ID of my application that I will need to use later on in the settings of my function app. Moreover, under API permissions, I have to configure the permissions that I want to have for SharePoint Online. So I select SharePoint, I will create a set of application permissions, and I will select the site full control.all in order to be able to create set collections and to apply templates on existing set collections. I add the permission, and when I'm done, I can grant the permissions to this application. I can also refresh this page to be sure that I will grant all of the proper permissions with my admin account to this application. Actually, right now I just have the sign-in user, so most likely I will have to do another uh, step of granting in order to grant the site full control permission, and then I will be ready. But regardless the number of grants that I need to do, uh, I will also go to the certificate and secret section, and there I can create a new client secret for my uh, application and for my client ID. I can call it client secret. I can give it a two years lifetime, for example, if I want to use this application with client ID and client secret. But in order to use SharePoint Online with AppOnly, we cannot rely on a client secret. And that's why I will delete this item and I will simply upload an X509 certificate that I will use to do certificate authentication targeting Azure Active Directory. In order to have a certificate that I can upload using PowerShell, I can do something like that. I can use the new PMP Azure certificate command letter. I will have to define a password for my certificate. I will provide a name and the duration for my certificate. 
and I will provide uh, the path for the PFX file, which includes the private key, and the .cert file, which does include the pu public key only. So let me execute this uh, statement in PowerShell, and I will have uh, my .cert file ready to go and to be used for configuring my uh, Azure ID application registration. So I go back here, upload certificate, and I can provide the path for my x509.cert file. And that's it. I will have my application in Azure AD configured for um, uh, up-only authentication using this X509 certificate. And again, the thumbprint or the certificate will be an information that I will need to configure in the settings of my application. So once I've done that, I can go back to the function app and I can go to the uh, function app uh, configuration settings under platform features configuration. And here I can define, and I have to define, a set of settings which will include, as you will shortly see, the client ID, the uh, thumbprint of the certificate, here it is the client ID, the thumbprint of the certificate, the target tenant, which will be mytenant.onmicro.com. I have to configure the website to being able to load the certificate. So with this website underscore load underscore certificate, I will enable uh, the application to load any certificate from the local certificate store of this machine. I can configure a path where I will store the provisioning template that will be used by the provisioning solution. And in my case, it will be the path of my Azure function in the target hosting environment. And I can configure a service account and a service password if I want to do the provisioning on behalf of a specific user, which is something that we will need to provision team sites because those sites, modern team sites, can be provisioned only on behalf of a user and not with an application only access token. Moreover, in the function app, I can also, under the SSL settings, upload the same X509 certificate that I created before. So if I go under private key certificate, I can upload a certificate, which I already did, and I, have, I will have to provide the x509.pfx file together with the password that I defined while creating my certificate. And this is the template that I have to configure in the application settings. So by doing that, I will have all of the settings for my function app in order to use um, the uh, target environment with an app-only token. So now I need to define my Azure function. So if I go here and I show you the provision site Azure function source code, you will see that in this Azure function, I'm using the PMP uh, PowerShell. So for example, I do connect PMP online, I do read the PMP provisioning template and so on and so forth. In order to have access to the PMP uh, PowerShell commandlet, I need to properly configure my application. So again, what I need to do is something like that. Save module. I will have to provide the name of the SharePoint Online PMP PowerShell extension. So let me get a predefined script to speed up the process. So let me get uh, uh, this file, for example, here this one. I can do a save model. I can provide, and I have to provide the SharePoint PMP PowerShell Online name, which is the name of the um, package, which includes the PMP PowerShell command lines. And I will store the output in a local folder in my machine. Once I've done that, I have to uh, go to my function app, so the one we are working on, and again, under platform features, I can access the advanced tool, the Kudo tool. Here in the Kudo tool, I can go under the back console PowerShell. I can search for the site folder, inside that one, the www root folder, and here is the provision site folder. I manually create a modules folder, and another child folder called as like as the package that I want to make available, so SharePoint PMP PowerShell Online. And in here, I can upload, I can drag and drop all of the files that I stored in my local path using the save module uh, commandlet. By doing that, the PMP PowerShell commandlet will be available in my uh, Azure function based on PowerShell. And once I've done that, I simply need to implement my function in my scenario, I will simply read the settings from the uh, configuration setting of my uh, function app using the dot environment, dot dollar environment, followed by the name of the setting that I want to read. And then I will define a few local variables. 
I can manage the owners and the members that I get in the request, and then I connect to the site which stores the provisioning template, and I get, as with cat PMP file, the uh, content of the provisioning template, and I store it locally as a file in the local folder of my Azure function. Then I read the template, I configure the owners and the members of the template, I create a target site, and if it is a communication site, I can do it with an app-only uh, connection. In fact, I do connect PMP in line, I provide the root site URL of my tenant, the client ID, the template of the certificate and the tenant, and I do the new PMP site to create that site with a specific owner, which will be the first uh, owner configured in the provisioning request. Or if it is a team site, I will have to connect with the specific uh, service credentials, service account credentials, those stored in the settings, because I cannot do a, an app only connection to create a new team site. And then I still create a new PMP site of type team site, and I will still provide a title and all of the settings for my team site. Once I've done that, whether it is a team site or a communication site, I can simply connect to the site that I just created and I can apply the provisioning template. And here there is just a trick to apply the template from the site system, excluding the security. And so I will use the .pmp file, for example, which includes all of the artifacts in one file. And then I apply it again, just applying the security so that I will create the settings, sorry, for the owners and the members requested by the requester user for the provisioning of my target site. One last thing to keep in mind is that when we do that, we can eventually, if we are using a consumption plan, we can run out of time and get a timeout execution of our function. If that will be the case, because the provisioning will take longer than the default five minutes or longer than the uh, up to 10 minutes that we can configure, well, to move the settings to a timeout of 10 minutes, you simply need to go to the WWF root folder and you need to edit the host.json file in order to configure the function timeout to up to 10 minutes. And if this is not enough, you can switch from a consumption plan to a app plan where you will pay on, uh, based on a fixed amount per month and you will be able to run your function as long as you need because there will not be any more a timeout up to 10 minutes. So that's it. Pretty uh, interesting scenario. And you can easily run PMP PowerShell in Azure Function, and you can invoke that Azure Function from a flow running in Power Automate. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week for the last episode of this series. Thank you.